If you want results like this from a driveway paint job, stay tuned. Before we get started, I want to let you know at eastwood.com, you can get a free printable list of all the steps you need to follow to bodywork and paint your car, as well as a complete list of everything you need. To get your free detailed instructions, all you have to do at any time during or after the video is click or tap the button in the top corner, follow the link in the video description, or follow the link that appears at the end of the video. This is definitely something you're gonna to wanna to print out and keep around because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. But now, let's get to the action. Mark here, R&D manager with the Eastwood Company. The video you're about to see is how to paint your car in four easy steps. We're gonna be using the Corvair door you see behind me, but these techniques that you're gonna see will apply to the entire car also. So let's get started. Okay, this particular door we have stripped down to bare metal. I actually fabricated the door skin on this one, but what you want to do is either use abrasive blasting, chemical strippers, or actually paper and a DA to get down to the bare metal. It's the best place to start. Now that we have it stripped down, we're going to use our pre to remove any grease, wax, oils, any contaminants on the surface. You want to do this before you do any further sanding or filler because you don't want to bury those into the metal. What you see here is we're taping off the uh, vent window. This was installed in the door just to make it a lot easier than trying to do this with fresh paint on it. But what we do want to do is protect the nice new seals that we bought. So we're going to mask those carefully at the door edge. As you can see, we're using a stir stick here to make sure that the tape gets between the actual seal and the metal of the door itself so we don't have a line later. Now we're going to go ahead and mask off with paper. Tip here is don't use Christmas wrapping paper or newspaper. The solvent's going to bleed right through that. Use masking paper designed for automotive paints. What I'm doing now is applying guide coat. This is used to identify any of your highs and lows on the panel itself, stuff that your eye may miss. I'm applying the guide coat in an even film across the entire panel. Now I'm going to block that with the 80 grit and the long block. A tip here is to use the longest board that you can that will fit the panel. I'm going to block this in a crosshatch pattern. What this does is this assures that you're maintaining a level surface. And we're going to use this same technique through the entire process here, even all the way up to our color sanding. As you can see from the horizontal lines, we've identified the lows from when we used the English wheel to make this panel. What we're going to do now is skim coat the entire door, knowing that we're going to remove about 80% of the product, but what this does is assures us that we have even coverage. Now I'm going to wipe the panel again with pre. I want to make sure that we remove any type of grease contaminants. As I said earlier, you don't want to bury these into the base metal and then have them come back at you later. Now I'm mixing up our filler. Mix as per the instructions, but two tips here. Knead the hardener. These things settle out and you end up dumping a lot of liquid onto your fresh filler. And second, don't mix on cardboard. The hardener itself will actually be absorbed into the fibers there. Mix on dedicated paper or a plastic mixing board. Now I applied the skim coat to the entire panel as you see, and then we're gonna give it it's about 15 minutes here to harden. Now I'm hitting it with the 80 grit and the long board. We're using the 18 inch board again and the 80 grit paper, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand from the style line to an edge. I'm not gonna just sand a couple inches in the center and just randomly move about the panel. You have to think about it as one fluid motion. You wanna be sanding complete edge to edge, line to line, or body seam, wherever you have a cutoff. Again, in the crosshatch pattern. This will assure us our dead level flat surface.
So we just finished the first round of block sanding and it's coming out pretty good. I want to hit it one more time to better identify any of the highs and the lows. I'm applying our guide coat again. This time we're using it not only to identify the uh, low spots, but also to make sure that we're removing each of our previous grit sanding marks, which you'll see in a minute here. I'm sanding the panel again in our crosshatch pattern using the 18 inch block and the 80 grit. What you want to do is progressively move up through your grits, starting with 80 to 120, 180, 220, all the way up to 320. Don't skip a step. You're going to think you're saving time right now. What's going to happen is when you get into base coat, you're going to see those deep scratches. You need to progressively move up through the grits using the guide coat to assure that you've removed the previous grit sanding scratches. This will assure a dead level and flat surface. Now what we've done is we've identified a couple lows that are going to need a quick little skim coat of filler. So I'll mix that up and just hit those areas. Don't worry about the bare spots and the cut through that you see here. We're going to take care of all that with epoxy primer in the next step. It's always a good idea to remove any dust and debris using the tack cloth before applying any coatings. I'll go ahead and apply the guide coat and continue with the 120 on up through the grits to 320. Here you can really see the importance of guide coat in identifying the remaining 80 grit sanding scratches I still have to remove, along with any other imperfections. You can even see the difference in identifying the 80 and 120 grit scratches using the guide coat. With the final block sanding of the filler completed, we're ready to prep the panel for epoxy primer. After I did the final wipe down with pre and a tack rag, I began mixing the epoxy paint. Our epoxy paint is a one to one ratio, easy to mix and very easy to apply, even for a beginner. And remember, you're gonna be blocking most of this down anyhow, so you don't have to worry about a little nib here or a run. Now that we have the epoxy mixed up, we're going to go ahead and filter that into the gun. With the lid on, you're going to have a vent on the top of your gravity feed guns here. Take that, remove it, and you'll see a small opening in there. Point that orifice towards you. You don't want to take the chance of having any paint drip out of the vent onto the surface itself. Before you spray the panel, go ahead and test your fan pattern on a piece of masking paper. I've adjusted the gun to about a 10 inch fan pattern here. Here's a tip moving forward. What you want to do is spray all your jams and edges first, then your main section. If you do it opposite this, you'll end up with overspray on the door skin. I'm using a large fan pattern here for, for a couple different reasons. As you see, we're spraying outside, just as you're going to be doing on your driveway. What you want to do is you want to get the product on and get out. We're using the epoxy primer here because it has excellent adhesion to both the bare metal and the body filler. I'm coming across the panel with a tack coat and then 90 degrees from that with a full wet coat to assure proper coverage. Going ahead and applying two full wet coats. First, hitting the edges and jams, and then the main door skin. 
As you can see, we're spraying outside. Not everybody has a booth or access to a booth, but don't worry, don't be afraid. With the right products and the right tools, you're gonna end up with great results. And don't be worried if you have a little bit of trash or a bug lands in it. We'll show you how to take care of that. Well, there you go. We had a bird land on the door anyhow. You walked around in a little area, but good thing you had little feet and those things will level out. We'll be able to fill it with the surfacer. Now we're back to the 18 inch board and we're using 320. We're gonna go ahead and block out this entire surface. Again, using our cross hatch and going from body line to edge of panel. Remember, you wanna use the largest board that will fit your panel to assure an even and level surface. The tip here is to use an abrasive pad instead of your paper around these irregular surfaces. It tends to conform to them more easily. Okay, here we are with our final wipe and tack. A tip here again, always wear rubber gloves. You're gonna have oils on your hands. You don't wanna get that into your primer. Another tip here when using your lint-free cloth is always flip to a clean surface. What you don't want to do is just move contaminants from one end of the panel to the other. Then go ahead and do your final tack in preparation for our urethane surfacer. Now we're going to go ahead and apply the urethane primer surfacer. Mix per the instructions, strain and fill the gun. Here's a little tip when spraying outside. Do your final tack rag just seconds before you're about to apply the paint. This assures you have the cleanest surface possible. I'm holding the gun about 10 inches from the surface and using a 50% overlap. An important tip here is to maintain a consistent gun to panel distance to avoid any heavy spots or light spray. Once the urethane surfacer has completely cured, we're gonna go ahead and begin our block sanding process. Again, apply the guide coat, and here we're starting with a 320 grit on our 18 inch board. Using the crosshatch pattern, continue up to 600 grit. Now I'm switching over to wet sanding. The reason for that is the water tends to keep the paper clean. You get a little bit better cut and a much, much finer cut. So we'll continue with that up through the 600 grit. Again, not skipping any grits in between.
Here I'm using a lint-free rag to get the majority of the dust off the panel. Most important step here is using your compressed air and you want to blow out any of the holes, crevices or seams where dust and water may be trapped. You want to get them out now before the paint gun finds them. So that's why we're using at least 50 to 60 PSI so that we're above the pressure of what your gun's going to be. Using the Eastwood mixing cups, we mixed our base coat to the appropriate ratio. Went ahead, strained, and filled the cup. Here I'm doing my final tack rag seconds before applying paint. Again, spray your jams and edges first, then come across with a 50% overlap. Go ahead and spray two to three full wet coats. You'll notice I'm applying additional coats 90 degree to the first coat. What this does, this helps me achieve a more level surface and eliminate any tiger striping, especially when spraying metallics. I'm spraying our Eastwood Pro Street Red here using the same 50% overlap and consistent gun to panel distance. As you can see, I'm using the same gun for our epoxy primer, our urethane, base coat, and also for the clear. The only thing we're doing is changing out the needle nozzle size. After our base coat has completely cured, we're going to begin the wet sanding process. As you can see, we're standing in a kiddie pool. But trust me, this will save you a lot of time and headache in cleanup, especially on a driveway or a garage floor. So we're starting with 600 wet. Go ahead and uh, continue in that crosshatch pattern that we've been using. At this point, I've switched to the six inch block while we're wet sanding. We're no longer shaping the panel, so it's okay to use the smaller block, which is more controllable. I'm simply cutting off the tops or the nibs, hitting any dirt or debris that may have landed in the coating. Here's a tip. If you find during the color sanding process that you cut through your color back into your primer, simply take a paper matchstick or a corner of a paper towel and touch it up with some base coat. With our urethane clear, accurately mixed, strained and poured into the cup, it's time to spray. Seconds before spraying, do your final tack rag. Go ahead and apply two to three full wet coats, just as you did base, with your edges first, then your main panel. We're spraying our two to one European clear, which is a very user friendly clear. We have three different temperature activators, Simply match them up to the temperature of the day you'll be spraying and you'll achieve excellent results with beautiful flow out. We're spraying to clear 45 minutes after the base coat had cured and we finished our block sanding. If you had to stop at this point for a day or two, you're gonna to need to sand the surface and go ahead through your pre-cleaning prep, just as we did prior to spraying base coat. After 48 hours of allowing our clear to cure, it was time to wet sand it. So back into the pool, started with a thousand grit, again, our crosshatch pattern, and then moved up to 1500 and 2000. I'm using my wiper in between grits here to not only clean the surface, but I'm also checking to look for color. 
When you're sanding clear, it's gonna be a milky clear color. If you find red on your wiper, that means you cut through your clear, which is no big deal. Finish out your block sanding and apply two more coats of clear. Once we're done with the wet sanding process, it's time to move on to the buffing. So go ahead and use a high quality system to achieve that showroom shine. I chose the Norton system, which is a three pad system for three easy steps. Just remember to saturate the pads and use minimal pressure on the panel. I'm starting with the wool pad, which will remove our 2000 grit sanding scratches. I'll then follow that up with the two foam pads to achieve professional results. As you progress through each of the pads, you'll notice the depth of image and the clarity will become more pronounced. I've switched to the blue pad, which will remove any of the swirl marks from our wool pad. And you can clearly see the depth of image becoming more brilliant. Lastly, I'll finish with the white pad, which will give you that brilliant finish you've been after. You can see the results we achieved, the reflection, the clarity, and all of this done outside. You can see the Eastwood logo clearly in the paint can and even read the serial number of this $100 bill. So as you can see, we finished the door and we're more than happy with the results. You can see by the dollar bill in there and the reflection in the gallon can, the depth of image is pretty spectacular, especially for painting this outside. So I hope this gives you the confidence to tackle a paint job at home. Even if you're outside, you can see the results that we achieved. It's no different doing this door than it would be a complete car. It's just panel at a time. That's the way you think about it. So for detailed instruction list and all the tools required to complete this job at home, go ahead and visit eastwood.com.